Okay, well, I just kind of... Welcome to part three of our home. Um, this is the second time I'm recording this because I lost the freak the freaking recording So I have to do this again But it's not that big of a deal Not annoyed just gonna do it Finally made it the library is a nice little home away from home the Hell huh. I should try to find Lauren and get this work done and over pretty quickly. I still got some stuff to do at home. Maria's plushie could use some work. <sighs> oh, there she is. Already picked out a workstation. Neat. She's waving me over. Emily! Hi! What's up with you? You uh, do realize we're in a library, right? And or voice. I chided her with a slight wink. Her cheeks puffed up in slight annoyance. Like oh, true. I guess it's early in the year, no one's bothering with the cramming part of their studies. Give it time, though. Out of the corner of my eye, I catch the librarian shooting us both a cold glance. I guess conversing isn't school-appropriate behavior. I tilt my head in the librarian's direction, Lauren's eyes widening. Oh, yeah. Let's get started. We got the computer right here. So, you wanted, like, 50s fashion stuff, right? <sighs> Doubt there'll be any old-timey magazines in a school library, but there might be a reference book somewhere. Well, worst case scenario, we'll just Google some stuff and find something cute, right? That, uh, works, I guess, technically. Oh, good. <laughs> Lauren's acting pretty odd. It is basically just the two of us, but she doesn't usually stutter. Okay, yeah, I can't. I can't do this, guys. Sorry. Freaking... Uh, I, I don't want to have to, like, re-say all the things I already said again. So basically, I'll just give you a quick recap. Um, uh, go find the book. Uh, Lauren, Lauren is pretty flirty with Emily about clothing. And, I don't know, you'll see it in a second. Okay, so what just happened right here was Lauren was like staring at us like a lot while we were talking and then we noticed and this is the choice i picked so i'll 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 re-say these parts i just don't i didn't want to have to do that other portion i'm sorry i'm just lazy something wrong you seem out of it uh a little Oh, yeah, I know. Hard to miss him in the morning. Are you getting enough sleep then? Of course I am. I mean, wait, what about you? Well, I'm busy, but... Well, like, the other people in drama keep coming to you to help with all the drama stuff. Script reading, set building, rehearsals, and this. It's crazy to think, but... Aren't you tired? All this running around, it has to be terribly exhausting. But that's not fixing the problem, is it? I don't know. I feel a lot better afterwards myself. It means I hold my head a little higher when I have to face the day. I think that's good enough for me. She's so optimistic and chipper all the time. Sparkle in her eyes. She really believed what she was saying. I don't believe she's fabricating that story. I always assumed that she had her own struggles. It just feels weird for her to open up about them like that. She was really strong. I'm just a vampire. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I get by just fine, so you don't have to worry about me. But I am worried. You look so tired all the time, and you just want to be so aloof now. Remember how we met? Uh, the classwork? We pushed our desk together and did the work. <sighs> I kind of did most of it, didn't I? But but you still helped a lot, a bit. Yeah, you 
more. I can't take it. So I'm just glad you were there to help me out in a pinch. It, it was nothing, really. And you're still taking notes for me when I'm off doing drama stuff. Come on, admit it. Your face for you and your mother. Don't try to hide it. I, I plead the fifth. You do the same for me, right? I don't know if you get much out of my notes, though. I probably just doodle. <laughs> true, true. It's not a big d wait, it uh kind of is. Don't you have to like memorize your script and stuff? Huh. That's true. Hey, don't space out like that. It's part of the gig. You know it by heart, right? Oh, absolutely. But I have friends in drama that are supporting me there too. We read everything a dozen times as an exercise. Crazy. I really want to be an actress, Sam, and every bit of experience is good experience, right? N yeah, definitely. Just just don't throw your back out overworking yourself. I uh, worry about you. Huh, funny. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> True. I was thinking we should have a summer party one day, and I'll finally get to teach you all my makeup tricks in theater. Slumber party? Lauren, we're 18. I think we're a little old for... It's professional stuff, you know. We, uh, didn't really do all that much, did we? Lauren leans back in her chair, reclining almost to the point of no return. My hand hovers out, stretching to catch her if she falls, and she is... want to... to do? Okay. Is she already losing speed on this homework project? Ugh, time to double down. Lauren sits back and stretches loudly, catching the attention of the nearby librarian. Well, it's part of the deal. You work, I work, we get things done, right? Yeah, but we don't have to get it all done today. She swivels in her chair, facing me with a grin. Her eyes are wide like saucers, devious in their nature. Let's go get some coffee. No, we gotta get this done. No distractions. But Emily... Maybe in a bit. Parfaits? I guess they'd suit you. Yeah, they're gluey, creamy, and perfectly sweet. Like me. <sighs> Avoiding her gaze, I shove my face into my book, closing it around me, my messy hair getting tangled up and matted down. Fine. My voice is muffled, barely audible, but Lauren is actually pretty attentive when she wants to be. <sighs> No, it's fine. You don't have to pay for me. I hate it when people pay for me. It's a nice gesture, but it only serves to reinforce my worries. It takes out even the smallest of choice that I have in my life. I guess I should listen to my own advice, however. She's being nice, so I should just suck it up. She stares at me with knowing eyes. She's aware that I'm conflicted. Fine, just let me pack up and check out this book. I could reference it when making the costumes. Thank you, even if that was expected. Sticking my tongue out at her, I pack my shit and motion towards the door. Her tongue reaches out just as quickly. I'm sure we look like idiots right now, but it doesn't really bother me. I like Lauren, and she's one of the parts of my life that I honestly say I can look forward to. So, what copy you gonna get? The boring old trip copy? So I'm shoved to the side as she jabs her fingers in my waist. Hey, I'm not thick enough for that. Hey, cut it out. That hurts. She giggles, poking harder and harder, joining in with both hands. I can't help but laugh back as much as it hurts. Tickles to all hell. <laughs> Bully. She slows her teasing as she sees me pout at her. Oh, you're no fun. Have a little sometimes. It's fun, you know. She grabs my hand from my pocket, locking fingers with mine. Sleep. You've never been tired of other people, right? You'll get your bed like a 
pack of rocks. No. She pulls me forward, her walk turning to a skip and a half. God, why do you have to be so embarrassing? I jog next to her, refusing to give in to her childish tendencies. Thankfully, my own personal hell ends just as quickly as it had started. We arrive at the coffee shop. Lauren's eyes light up like a Christmas tree, like they always tend to do whenever there's a seasonal special drink available. She always likes the fruity ones. Thankfully, they don't tend to have a lot of coffee in them. If they did, dear God, I don't know what I would do with her. Oddly enough, as I gaze at the signs inside the shop, I realize that there isn't a seasonal coffee in stock. There's something much, much more interesting in store for us. Hey, Emily, isn't that your <sighs> yeah, that is. I'm surprised she recognized him. She has a damn near photographic memory. However, so I guess it makes sense. I'm sure she's seen photos of my family through social media or otherwise. Well, you should go visit him. I'm sure he'd love the company. Eh, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a while. See, I like, like, realistic looking photos like this. So it looks like they took, like, a video of, like, a... Not a video. God damn, my words. They took, like, a picture of, like, an actual coffee shop, but then, like, you know, changed it up a bit and, like, you know, obviously blurred out a person's face. But take like pictures of actual places and then just you know i don't know what the term is but i'm, I'm just gonna say like pixelated or something a little more like they blur add like blurs and like the lighting seems to be a little bit stronger than it would be if like on the normal photo so that way you can put these put these in games and i just i just really like that <sighs> eh, i don't know i haven't talked to him in a while i'm not exactly comfortable in, in conversation with him we just don't know each other like we used to. Nowhere near close. Lauren had different ideas, however. Whoosh, she's off like a rocket. Hey, wait up, don't just walk up to him. Lauren enters the shop, leaving me in the dust. Through the window, I see her walk right up to him, sparking up a conversation as if it were the simplest thing in the world. She looks over and points at me. She waves with an ecstatic smile. Begrudgingly, I enter the store and walk up to him. Hey, Dad. Hi, sweetie. It's nice to see you here. Such a pleasant surprise. <sighs> Next to me, Lauren's practically beaming. She is somewhat aware of my home situation, so she's probably loving this little father-daughter bonding moment. <sighs> it's only uncomfortable for me. Here he is right in front of me, someone I've all but stopped missing, someone I haven't really bonded with as of late. Why am I so nervous? He's my own father. Given that, why does he feel like a stranger to me? I don't understand. But I do understand that he's right in front of me, sipping on a cup of coffee, hunching over the counter with bags in his eyes matching my own. He looks tired, defeated. He looks like he has no life left. The light in his eyes gone. I wonder if that's how I look. If so, I don't know why Lauren would enjoy my company so much after all these years. Hell, my dad even has the same unkept, unkept hair that I do, and that's not genetic. For a fleeting moment, I feel concerned. Yeah, Lauren here wanted to catch a drink real quick. We've been researching stuff for her play. Yeah, Emily's been super helpful. She's even going to work on some costumes for us. Oh, that's wonderful, Emily. You've grown up so much, and you're being so proactive. I'm happy to see you two together. At least you went alone with her. Well, perhaps being alone would be better than the loneliness that comes with our household. If you were around more, you'd understand. Eh, it's nothing. Lauren wrote me in. There wasn't really a choice in the matter anyways. They've been better. School is still, well, school. Mom's still mom. Maria's getting older, which is pretty cool. Still a shy one, though. Oh, that's, um, good to hear. Listen, honey, I'm sorry for not being there. If I were, I know things would be better, but we have to make do with what we have. Yeah. Okay, that one was really quiet. I don't know if you guys heard that. 
He takes a sip from his coffee, letting it draw out. He's probably thinking of what to say next. I decided to stop him right there. Yeah, I understand. There's not much you can do. He's already said more than he should. He's slipping up. He's a lot more tired than I'm sure he wants us to know. Thankfully, he's talking to me and not the others. I'm mature enough to understand without letting it get to me much. Just come see us every once in a while. Even if it means taking a day off, I'm sure a day off here and there won't kill you. Me, you, and your children. That's all we want. I let him off easy. There are plenty of choice words a more emotional person would say at this point, but it's no use. I'd rather not shake the nest, especially with him. He's more like I am than I'd like to admit. Water under the bridge. I leave it like that. I don't like having an abs absentee father, but making a big deal out of it won't help. It's best to leave things where they lay. Dad slumps over against the counter, defeated. He tears at his hair. He tears at his hair for a bit, moving back up with a sigh. He looks over to Lauren with a smile. And of course it was great meeting you, Lauren. Treat her nicely, okay? Sure thing. She responds in the same old chipper voice she always has. See you later, Dad. Bye, all. And with that, he grabs his cup and leaves. The cafe seems eerily quiet now, despite the constant murmurs emanating from the nearby customers. We are to our <laughs> We order ourselves the drinks we neglected earlier and find a booth to seat ourselves. Your father seems so nice. It's a shame to hear what he's going through. Unfortunately, he puts us through our own hell. Mother's never going to get better without him. Better? Is your mom sick? Sick in the head? Terrible. No, no, she's just a shitty person. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I wonder if it'd be better if we weren't. Don't say that. I'm sure everyone's trying their best. You just have to manage the hand you're dealt. And besides, I'll always be here for you. No questions asked. You can count on me. She earned herself a small smile out of me, but my mind's still in a dark spot. I don't know if her support will be enough. I don't know if I deserve her support. I don't know if things will ever get better with or without me. Sometimes. I wonder if things would be better without me, but I always try to force my mind onto other matters. Well, even if I were to leave, I doubt my mother would learn her lesson. She'd never change. She's convinced me that much. That's good to hear. Thank you. We end the outing with little more than idle chatter. Today's been an exhausting day, more running around than I'm used to. I can never keep up with Lauren's energy. I'm so tired. Time to head home. I wave farewell to Lauren as we go our separate ways. After Lauren left, the family all split off in their separate nightly rituals. I'm back in my room. It's late. I really should think of going to bed. I want to sleep, but finishing this plushie for Maria is more important. I glance at my bed. The, te the, the temptation is strong, but I manage to hang on by the skin of my teeth and pick up the half-made plushie. It looks pathetic now, but it's coming along. Just a little bit more sewing to do, then I stuff it. 
Luckily, I've got everything I need from my leftover materials. I'll make sure Maria loves it. There we go. I hold up the hollow plushie. Still looks a little sad, but at least it doesn't look like someone butchered it. I start to grab handfuls of stuffing and jam them into every corner. It's kind of fun in a weird way. It's the only part of this where I don't need to be gentle. I felt like punching something all day, so this is just what I need. Once the stuffing is done, I finish the last of the stitching by hand. I glance at the clock. It's nearly midnight by the time I'm done. Seriously? <sighs> I still need to do some concepts for the costumes in Lauren's play. Screw getting up early to do them. I'll just get them done now and then I'll go to sleep. <sighs> the house is pretty much silent right now. It's a refreshing change of pace, actually. God, I'm tired. I shake my head and slap my cheeks. Just get this done. I take out the fashion book I found from the library. It's neat stuff in here. Nodding to myself, I start sketching out some ideas to show to Lauren. I try to think back to the stuff we looked at today. There's the Elvis ripoff outfit for Birdie. That doesn't do hard. You can get those out of any cheap costume store. It'll be the girls that are the trickiest. They need their outfits the most. I guess I'll just concentrate on those. The guys can take care of themselves. Mostly circle skirts and blouses. That or dresses. Either circle or sheath. Circle is good. That's a pretty simple thing to make. Lucky me. I remember you need petticoats to make the circle thing puff out properly. But to hell with that. Way too much work and most of the girls would hate it. At least, that's what my research said. They're supposed to be itchy like crazy. It's just a school play, right? I don't need to go all out. I sketch a few designs based on what I saw in the books and online. They're pretty rough, but they give a good idea of what I'm aiming for. Yawning, I check the clock and see I'm, it's almost done. Screw it, I'm done. Getting up from my desk, I can't even be bothered getting changed for the night. I flop onto my bed. Switching into the dreamscape. Hello? Anyone in there? My normally gentle transaction was punctu punctuated by a light knocking against my head. <laughs> Eventually, I mustered enough consciousness to find the culprit. You can quit poking me. I'm awake. You've been pretty spacey lately. Something you? No, everything's been great. I'm just... Confused? About what? I was thinking about my parents and just don't understand why someone would want to be one. But since most people end up becoming parents, there should be something I'm missing, right? I mean... It's a huge responsibility. You have to take care of yourself and someone else that's completely helpless. And some people even work overtime to put their kids through college. All for someone that's never done anything for you and might not even like you when it's all over. You sometimes pay for your retirement home? So it's a feel good about yourself kind of thing? I don't think so. Most parents will ignore other people's feelings for the benefit of their kid, right? That shouldn't make anyone feel good about themselves. It's like how when you love someone else, you share their happiness. At that point, doing good things for them become kind of like doing good things for yourself. So it's like vicarious selfishness? True. Sounds a bit bleak. Thank God we never actually have arguments. I'd never keep up. Has she been rehearsing that? 
and that war destruction line went way too far under the radar. Thank you for your wisdom, Professor Deanne, but how far does that go? Not that, you boofhead. I mean the lovey-dovey happiness stuff. I still don't think the, w the work some parents put in is worth that. You have to do some things for yourself alone, right? Hmm. I don't know. So much for boundless wisdom. I couldn't help blushing. That was a bit too sincere for me to handle. Huh? Oh. Yeah, that's a tough one. I think I'll head home and think about that. Bye! Amy. Bye. Oh, and I love you too. Now, if it isn't my favorite daughter, how are you holding up? Uh, fine, I guess. I was just curious about something. Go ahead and tell us what's on your mind, Emily. I was just wondering how you two do the whole parenting thing. How are you still so upbeat after all the work you do? <laughs> Is that all? I'm just happy to provide for you kids so that you can be successful someday. Watching you and your brother grow up is enough repayment for me. That said, maybe you two could help pay for our retirement home later? Oh, huh. Who would even think of that at a time like this? Uh-huh. So you put up with the work itself for that? My job can drive me nuts, but they wouldn't pay people to work if it was fun. Ain't that the truth? Some people go insane searching for some dream job that's fun to do and pays well. I think they'd be better off just buying lottery tickets. Work isn't satisfying in itself. Providing for your family is satisfying. And work is how you do it. I'm not sure if I want to believe that. So providing for the family is important enough for you to spend most of your days doing a job you don't like? Of course. I'm sure that it's hard to understand now, but you'll get it when you're older. I'm a dad. And since I'm a dad, I love my kids, and I want to see them get degrees and do something with themselves. So I'll get a degree and become successful. Then I'll work so that my kids can have degrees and become successful. So they can work to make sure that my grandkids become successful. Then my grandkids will... Actually, when I think about it, I'd probably be dead at that point. <sighs> so you don't have any regrets? Of course not. I've had my disappointments. But realistically, everything has turned out as well as I could have hoped. My gaze swerved towards the fifth seat of the table, standing alone. So you wouldn't have wanted another child? Like a daughter, maybe? <laughs> What's this all of a sudden? As far as I'm concerned, this family turned out perfectly. Well, like they all say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We do love to work for your sakes. We still have our breaking points. Extra mouth to feed and more tradition to save up for might have been too much for us. And besides, you and your brother get along so well, it would be a shame if we ended up throwing off what you two have going. But anyways, why do you ask? Did you want a little sister? Oh, and then we switch back. <laughs> I love that transition. Sunlight pierces my eyes. My body chills and shivers as blood rushes through my veins, thrusting me into the world of the living once more. Do I really have to wake up now? The effort to keep my eyelids open almost feels like too much, if not for the sunlight that bleeds into my vision and scrapes at my pupils. I get up from my bed and loosely stand on my own two feet, 
My muscles strain and ache as I stretch away whatever ill-fated weights once locked my shoulders in place. I grab my uniform, getting dressed, and get ready for school. It's like an average regular day, except my fingers are numb with pain and my back is in desperate need of a spa day. But first, the fruit of my labors. Aww, that's so cute! Like a little ram. That's relatively normal. The soft color of the skin gives off a peach-like hue. The fabric is soft to touch, and the horns give off this weighty, bouncy feeling when you walk around with it. Is this enough? It's not spectacular at all. It feels like something you'd buy in a bargain bin because it didn't sell well enough. Shouldn't I be refining it? Is this good enough to give to her? No, no, it's fine. I won't get anywhere from stressing over this. I sneak my way out of the room, hiding the plushie behind my back. Maria! Emily? Well, what are you doing? She looks at me with a face of confusion. Close your eyes. I'm scared. You don't need to be. But, but... She lowers her head and looks down towards the floor. It's alright, I'm giving you a surprise. Hold out your hands. She closes her eyes and holds out her hands. Is it candy? I take the plushie and place it in her hands. Is it cotton candy? Nope. She opens her eyes and squeezes it. Did, did you buy this for me? I made it. You, you did? Her face flushes a bright red as she processes how much work must have gone into it. Oh, that vo that one wasn't voiced. Uh, Emily, you didn't really have to go through all this. It's too much, honestly. I don't feel like doing like a high-pitched voice for the character since that, that line wasn't voiced for some reason, and my throat's kind of dry right now. It's a present. There's never too much for something like this, right? <laughs> it's yours. You don't need to feel guilty over it. <sighs> Thank you, Emily. She finally calms down and a smile comes across her face. Right. Time for the day to begin in earnest. Emily! Maria! Are you done over there? <sighs> From out of the corner of our eye, Mother calls us to the living room. Coming, Mom. <sighs> Maria and I come down to the living room with her carrying the plushie in her hands. Children, breakfast will be late today. Someone drank the last of the orange juice and put it back in the fridge. You know how much that irks me, don't you? An audible gas escapes Maria's mouth, and she looks at the floor in embarrassment. Mother gazes at each of us. We remember Maria finishing it last night, but it isn't worth bringing up. I'm going to the store. I'll be back in five minutes. Emily, you're responsible for getting them ready when I'm out. Yes, Mom. She rushes out the door, and we're left to our own. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to stop the video here cuz it's around 33 minutes. I don't I don't want to really make this too long. <laughs> but um yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um again, I'm I'm really loving it like usual. This game is flat out amazing. But um if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, please. I would really appreciate any of those three. Um come oh oh, I've got a request. Comment down below who's your favorite character right now out of out of just all the characters that have been introduced so far like i got i got to go personal opinion i'm i'm loving i'm loving maria she's she's an adorable little cinnamon roll <laughs> but um so hope you guys like the video i'm going to hopefully record within the next 2 or 3 days again i maybe i'll record tomorrow i don't know it's kind of random and sometimes I just don't feel up to it, but, you know, I still try to do it. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and peace.